We're joined today by the one and only Bill Moomy. You might know him better as Art Barnes from the group Barnes and Barnes. He's got a new album out now as And Barnes. It's called Shit Happens. Bill, how are you today? Hey, Dustin. I'm doing real good. How about you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks for uh, helping me promote the album. <laughs> well, first, I got to say it's an honor speaking with you. Thank you again for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for uh, inviting me on. Well, I know you've got a new album out as And Barnes. It's called Shit Happens. I'll have to bleep that when we uh, replay this one. <laughs> but can you tell us a bit about the new album? Isn't it silly that we can't say the title, considering all the reality <laughs> that we're <laughs> we're forced to absorb uh, every day. Um, the album is, I had one simple goal, and that was to make an album that has a real party feel and is fun and is upbeat and that grooves and uh, is goofy. You know, and it, I wanted to make a project that takes the listener out of reality prime and into just some humor, and I wanted to play some distorted guitar and get back to uh, what, Barnes and Barnes uh, originally was all about, and um, unfortunately, my my partner Robert Hamer in Barnes and Barnes passed away uh, in March. So uh, the album's dedicated to him. He did hear it in a various uh, incomplete form, uh, and he was very supportive of it. He just wasn't physically up to being a part of it, but uh, it's certainly uh, a, a love letter to Barnes and Barnes, and you know, just to have some fun. Well, it's definitely an album that longtime fans of Barnes and Barnes will love, and I know the album comes out on Demented Punk Records, and you've been working with them uh, for quite a few years now, I think. The folks at Demented Punk, which people can find at dementedpunk.com, John Caffiero and Steve uh, Blickenstaff, uh, they, they did a great great job on the design and the mastering you know it's available on on vinyl beautiful big vinyl and cd and it's also streaming everywhere and they've got some cool merch to go with it they've been very supportive of uh barnes and barnes and and barnes uh for quite a quite a while they've released some of our early catalog and uh several of our last uh, you know uh, fresh kind of projects and the last Thing Robert was really into um, being creepy, <laughs> which is cool. <laughs> but uh, uh, in the last record we made together in 2020 uh, was called Pancake Dream, which is also out on Demented Punk. And that was a very psychodrama, dark record, kind of a Twilight Zone type thing. Very valid in its artistic integrity. But <clears throat> after we finished that, I really wanted to get back to the fish heads vibe you know just that fundamented what the heck is this guy talking about <laughs> music and i wanted to i wanted to rock in a way that if i'm making a solo project or if i'm working in another collaborative uh musical project like action skulls or something uh I, you know i can't i can't do it the way i can do it as as art barnes you know, as Art Barnes, there's really no rules, and if I want to try to get back into an iron butterfly groove, <laughs> I can do that without feeling uh, odd or odder. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. You've been doing this for for a long time, but the uh, the album still has uh, you know the same humor as uh, you guys had, you know, back of I guess 45 years ago. Now, I mean, you have definitely haven't lost your sense of humor along the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, it, it, it wasn't something that I um, I labored over hard. You know, I I I kind of knew the the grooves that I wanted to lay down. You know, the kind of, I wanted this kind of an old fashioned rock and roll groove, or this kind of a psychedelic rock and roll groove, or this kind of a R and B thing. And then I just you know allowed my Art Barnes character to to write lyrics from a the same place I did when we were teenagers. So uh, I'm happy with it. It makes me smile. And I, my whole reality was really just to have fun this time around. You know, there's so much heavy darkness and stuff in the world today that if, if I can get a listener to escape from that and just feel goofy for, and smile, find the humor for, you know, 35 minutes or 40 minutes, then I've done my job. Excellent. Well, Bill, you mentioned uh, the album 
uh, dedicated to Robert. Um, will you continue on with Ann Barnes and maybe release some more music here down the road? I never say never, and I never really commit to what's going to come. I, I uh, am so grateful that the muse continues to visit me on a pretty regular basis. You know, I don't, I don't really go fishing for it too much. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, there'll be a null period where I'm not writing, and then I'll start to get songs, and they usually, uh, for many years now, they usually come in batches, almost like sometimes you'll get six or seven, and sometimes you'll get 20. So if if the Ann Barnes, Barnes and Barnes vibe, uh, if that character wakes up inside and has something to say, I won't close the book on it. This feels like a, a, a nice tip of the hat and fare thee well to uh, Barnes and Barnes or, or Ann Barnes. You know, I mean, it feels like a nice place to close, but I would never say, you know, if I get inspired, then I'll, I'll do more. Well, one thing I love is that you're, obviously your talent shines through. You're, you're a talented musician, and you know you could have easily tried to do more traditional music, and, and maybe because of the uh, novelty aspect of uh, Barnes and Barnes, maybe you could have kind of phoned it in, I guess you could say. But you guys are were definitely great musicians, and uh, that shines through, I think. So that's awesome. Thank you very much. I played everything on the record, and um, Barnes and Barnes always took our tracks really seriously. Um, we might have been singing about insane, crazy stuff, you know, whatever it might have been, three drunk newts or a party in my pants, whatever we were singing about. Um, we we definitely always took our tracks very seriously and wanted them to be of a high caliber of musicianship and, and recording, it, working with the limited equipment we had back in the day. But, yeah, no, I, I really wanted to play uh and there's there are these throwback sounds in a way on this record that you know I grew up when I grew up and I, I like those '60s sounds. Uh, when I'm collaborating with other musicians, uh, I don't know. I guess there's there's a framework that you try to stay within. But when you're working in a, a Barnes mode, there is no limit to where you can go. I mean, you can try anything. And if it's insane and, and you go, I would never do that. I just played percussion on the uh, tabletop with a, you know, a glass and a pencil, whatever it might be. I'm just making that up. But that actually is on the record. Um, yeah, you're, you're, there's no, there's nothing that censors you from trying weird stuff. And I and I wanted to play um, in that '60s way and '50s way too. There's you know there's some throwbacks to early rock and roll on the record. There's some throwbacks in a way to uh, uh, '50s and '60s blues. The the title track is very much like a Slim Harpo shuffle. Um, and it gives me the opportunity, uh, you know, to really stretch and play in, in, in styles that if I were making a Bill Mooney solo record, I would feel maybe pretentious, you know, trying to do that. Whereas with uh, Art Barnes playing in those styles, there's, <laughs> I don't feel pretentious. I just feel like I'm an actor kind of, you know, playing a role that's pretty uh, diverse. <laughs> well, and of course, you came from the acting world into music and you know, as we mentioned, about 45 years, I think, since that first album and uh, Fish Heads. You know, it's incredible that the way that song took off and then kind of led to a career as Art Barnes here for, I guess, most of your adult life. Well, Fish Heads was very, very good for us in, in many ways. It's been, you know, films, film festivals all over the world. Rolling Stone named it the 57th best video of all time, even though it's a film, it's not a video. Bill Paxton, of course, the late Bill Paxton directed our little guerrilla film there. It was on Saturday Night Live twice. It's been on The Simpsons. It's been a Quiznos sandwich commercial. It's been in a lot of films and television shows. And yeah, it, it, that song particularly allowed us to take whatever income we made from it and either expand our, our recording studio facilities and to finance more short films. And uh, Barnes & Barnes was always, and as is Ann Barnes, really, it's always been a exercise outside of the realm of like what, <laughs> what 
we do in Reality Prime. It's kind of been like a little bonus thing. Yeah, B- B- Barnes & Barnes made over 10 records, but that's over a course of, as you say, 40 years. So it's not like we were out on the road touring it all the time and just beating it to death. We waited till we were in the right kind of kooky mood. And then it just flowed out real quick, usually. Well, again, the new and Barnes album, Shit Happens, is out now on the Demented Punk Records. And uh, Bill, I know you've done quite a bit musically over the years and worked with a lot of other people as well. I wanted to ask you about uh, your memories of working with Crispin Glover on his album. I, I mean, is there more out there that we could see down the road? I, I've always read that there's uh, more out there than what we've heard. No, uh, I, my involvement with that ended uh at the first album. Um, my late partner, Robert and Crispin, uh, recorded a second album um, that I don't believe uh, is ever going to surface. I don't, uh, I wasn't involved in that one. Um, Crispin was a very difficult guy to work with. I mean, he was harder for me to work with than Wildman Fisher. <laughs> and that's saying a lot. <laughs> You've had basically two careers. Uh, the music career would be enough for most people, but when we go back to your acting career, I, I knew you had done a lot of work as an actor, but I guess I didn't realize how prolific you were from from a young age. I mean, you've done uh, just about everything uh, before you even got into music. Yeah, that's true. Hundreds and hundreds of uh, television shows and a lot of feature films with a lot of iconic people. And I started working when I was young, five, and uh, here I am, you know, Going on seventy, uh, still uh, being able to pretty pretty much call the shots in a uh, artistic arena that I, many you know I mean I've written a lot I've been a pretty successful writer I've my memoir just came out uh, when that can be found on Amazon or anywhere anywhere people look for it it's called uh, the full Mummy. <laughs> and uh, yeah I've written a lot of television shows a lot of comic books. Uh, uh, I've been a producer for many years, especially on the uh, Ancient Aliens television series. I've been working on that show for the last six years. So I've been very lucky to work in all these different arenas of television, film, acting, music, writing, producing. It's uh, It's been good. I, I've appreciated the opportunities, and I've done my best to rise to the occasion when I've been in that seat. Well, I know, of course... A lot of people know you're from Lost in Space, but I wanted to ask you about being on the Twilight Zone, and you know, especially the "It's a Good Life" episode. I mean, that's been redone, or you know, been the inspiration for probably a hundred other things. I'm sure as a kid, you probably didn't think people would still be talking about that, you know, 60 years after the fact. Well, as a kid, I I, I didn't think beyond the next issue of you know Detective Comics from one month to the next. Uh, if I had known the kind of longevity longevity that some of those projects had, like Lost in Space and the Twilight Zone, I would have renegotiated my residuals. Um, very, I'm very proud of uh, my uh, three episodes of the original Twilight Zone, and I was also in the feature film, and I uh, wrote a sequel. Well, no, that's not... Anyway, I was in the sequel to it, uh, It's a Good Life, with my daughter and Cloris Leachman. I, I contributed to the story, but I certainly didn't write that. And I did write one of the uh, 2003 reissues. So, um, yeah, I've got uh, Twilight Zone alumni cred, and um, I think Twilight Zone's probably the best television series ever made. Uh, that's completely due to, of course, the brilliance of Rod Serling. It's also due to the fact, in my opinion, for what it's worth, it's also due to the fact that there was no uh, regular cast. So every week, they they had to they got to pool from the best character actors and, and actors of the era, and uh, some of the performances in those Twilight Zone episodes are just brilliant and uh, a wise decision that they made most of the time was to leave a lot of the effects and things up to the imagination. There are some cheesy moments in Twilight Zone where you see some stuff that you go, oh, that looks really silly. I mean, the, the, the what is it, the gargoyle or whatever, the, the monster on the wing with Shatner, when you see that monster now, you kind of <laughs> sure. go, oh, yeah, okay, well, it might have been scary in 1961, but it looks pretty goofy today. But a lot of that stuff, they, they left up to the audience's imagination, and uh, I think that was a wise decision. Also, black and white really translates well to uh, allowing your imagination to quickly go into another realm. And uh, 
yeah, I love the Twilight Zone. Well, it's definitely uh, fascinating the career you've had. And again, uh, the new album is just out here. Is there anything else maybe coming up for you or, or something else the listeners might be watching out for? Oh, there's, yeah, there's always a lot. Um, I have two other musical projects out right now, and uh, an album with Paul Gordon that's called Gully. Uh, the third Action Skulls album, From a Running Horse was uh, just released, streaming and downloading. That's a band I'm in with Vicki Peterson of the Bangles and John Cowsill of the Cowsills and the Beach Boys. Uh, very happy with that. Great canyon rock kind of harmony, jangly guitars thing. I uh, worked on a film that's coming out next year. And uh, as I said, mentioned earlier, I, my memoir is out. And um, meanwhile, I'm, you know, it's holiday time. I'm hanging with the family, and right before we called, I was just decorating our Christmas tree. Bill, again, I'm a huge fan of yours, have been for a long time, and it's been an honor speaking with you. Thank you so much. Well, my pleasure, Dustin. I, I hope uh, the listeners enjoy the music. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about it. And again, that was the one and only Bill Moomy, actor, musician. His new album has And Barnes called Shit Happens, on Demented Punk Records, is available now.